In the previous video, we discussed the basic idea of probability. Uh, we saw that you need a certain context, which was given by an experiment. Uh, from the experiment, we found a sample space, namely the collection of all possible outcomes denoted by S. And we would be interested in the probability of an event, namely uh, the likelihoodness of that uh, of a collection of these possible outcomes occurring. And we calculated it by uh, looking at the fraction of times that the desired uh, outcomes occurred uh, among all possible outcomes. Now, uh, let's look at a, an example of here. So uh, this is some information pulled from a newspaper here uh, in Ju June of 2008. Uh, the 50 commercial banks in the U.S. had a total domestic deposits of $4.2 trillion, and the top three were given by Bank of America, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, and Wachovia. And of course, all these have changed now. Um, now, the question we're interested in is what would be the uh, probability that a dollar of domestic deposits would be held by, say, Bank of America. Uh, or we're just interested in what percent of the domestic deposits would be held by Bank of America. So let's see the, the context for this. Uh, we can take a look at the uh, experiment here. The experiment would be that we're going to select, randomly select, a, a dollar of deposit. And then we want to look at what bank it's held in, identify the bank. OK, so what are the set of all possible outcomes? Well, these are just going to be uh, all the uh, banks. There's 50 of them, according to this data. And the event that we're interested in, that the bank that ends up being selected is Bank of America. Now, there's our, our setup. Uh, let's go and look at how, uh, what our is, fractions is going to be here. Now, uh, this can be sort of like the experimental value of tossing coins, uh, except I would run through instead of tossing a coin 10 times, I would toss it uh, <laughs> 4.2 trillion times. Okay, and then I'd be interested in uh, among all of those 4.2 trillion, I'll drop the billions here, uh, what fraction of the time am I going to get Bank of America? Well, it would come up uh, 650 uh, billion times. All right, so I've got a bit of arithmetic there, which you can calculate out. It's going to be uh, slightly more than 15%, so we'll call it that. Uh, all right, so what we did here was uh, we looked at uh, just uh, one bank here. We were interested in this particular event. But notice there's there's several other uh, banks here, not just the Bank of America, but there's a few more. OK, so we can formulate this setup a little more formally as possible. And this is, would be called a frequency distribution or probability distribution. So let's take a look at our outcomes. OK, so there was the Bank of America as an outcome. Uh, there was then uh, J.P. Morgan uh, Chase as an outcome. Well, let's see. And how many times did this occur? Well, the deposits, spell it out, was for Bank of America was uh, uh, 650. I'll drop the billions. J.P. Morgan had 450. Uh, Wachovia was 400 billion. And the total down here that was given in the problem was uh, uh, 4,200 billion. So we'll let that be the total down here. Now, when we calculated this percent above the probability, what did we find? Well, the, what was the probability that 
a randomly chosen dollar would uh, be identified with Bank of America. Well, it was going to be this uh, 650 uh, over uh, uh, 4200, which we saw was 15%. Now, we can do the same for each of these others. Uh, we look at 450 over the total down here of uh, 4200 and that comes out to about 11%. Uh, Wachovia, 400 over uh, 4,200 is kind of come out to be about 10%. All right, and so what we've done here is that over in this part, this is what has been could be called a uh, frequency distribution. Now, if instead of looking at the uh, frequencies, if I decided to look at the outcomes here and the probabilities, just these two columns, then that would be called a probability distribution. So linking those two, that's a probability distribution. Now, they have when you formulate it this way, you can actually calculate a lot more things. For example, supposing I wanted to know uh, what was the probability that or what percent of our uh, domestic deposits were in the, the top three banks. All I'd have to do would be to add these up, 26, 30, that's 36 percent. Okay, well notice there's something missing here. Well, what's missing is the other 47 banks. And that should really be listed here as other and so that's going to be represented by uh, by what number well I could figure out what are the deposits here well if I add these two together um, I get uh, 657 uh, 1100 uh, 1500 so if I subtract 1500 from 42 I get 2700 Okay, so this should be 2,700 here. So if you go grab a, a calculator, uh, you'll see you know, 2,700 over 4,200. That comes out to be uh, 64%. Okay, now what this illustrates is certain properties of uh, a probability distribution. For example, let's abstract it a little bit. Let's look at the outcomes. Okay, I'll just call them X1, X2, uh, Xn. And here's the probabilities. Uh, P1, P2, Pn. So here in this case, there are one, two, three, four of these. So the first one is 15%, and the last one is 64% here. Well, so what are the features that uh, come up about this? Well, uh, factor number one is that notice the probabilities are always going to be divided by the total so that each of these probabilities is going to be a number between 0 and 1. That's important to remember. You cannot have a probability of over 1. And the second fact, which we made use of here to find this missing number, was that the sum of all of these probabilities here has got to equal 1. And of course then we also saw a few other little facts like if I wanted to find uh, say the sum of uh, the probability of something was either J.P. Morgan or Wachovia, I would just have to add up the two values associated with that. Okay, so what we've done is uh, we've seen some of the properties here of a probability distribution.